Yes, ma'am, I'm free. Nice shirt. Thank you. Go Tigers. Yep. Okay. Go Tigers, that's right. Look, I've had a bad day, and I don't need anything from you. Well, I need to know where you want to go. I want to go somewhere where there is peace and quiet. Peace and quiet, okay. Peace and quiet. Can you do that, man? Uh, yes, ma'am. What a grouch. Okay, you ready? Here we I'm go. Ready. All right. Why are you driving like an idiot? Ma'am, I'm driving all right. You just be calm. I'm taking you someplace peaceful, okay? All right. There, we got to go now. Oh. Okay. Okay. All right, here we are. How's this? Where are you taking me? It's a playground. There ain't nothing but kids out here screaming, old folks talking. But it, it's a park. It's a pretty day. I don't care what it is. Well, I thought you'd enjoy being out, enjoying nature and seeing the, the sky and just having a good time. I told you quiet. <clears throat> okay, quiet. You, you want quiet? I'll give I'll you quiet. Give you quiet buddy. Okay, here we go. Sharp right. Here we are, ma'am. How's this? What are you doing? This is a graveyard. There's nobody here but dead people. Yes, ma'am. They're all quiet. <laughs> I told you I want peace and quiet. Now, if you call this quiet, get me peace. Okay. Well, you're hard to please. All right, ma'am. Here we go again. You sure you want this now? I want this. All right. Worry, I have I have somebody to take care of it. Okay. All right, ma'am. Here we are. Here's the place. Oh my golly. There's a man up there, and he's on a cross, and he's bleeding. He's bleeding. Yes. I told you I wanted peace. This is just an execution. Well, ma'am, if you can't find peace at the cross of Christ, you'll never find peace anywhere. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's the question. That's the question. Was he a real person? What did he say? What did he do? What made him so special? What made him different than any other man in history? The records show. His birth was a miracle. His mom was a virgin and she was pregnant. He made the blind see. The deaf hear. The mute speak. The paralyzed walk. He healed terrible diseases. He knew what was in men's minds. He knew what was in men's hearts. He knows what is in men's hearts. He knew the story of people's lives without ever having met them. He spoke with authority. He amazed teachers. He amazed everyone. Nature obeyed him. He turned water into wine. He walked on water. He walked on top of the water. He could change the weather. He fed 5,000 people from one lunchbox. He brought people who were dead back to life. He loved sinners. He loved everyone. 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 He forgave sins. He never made a mistake. He never once sinned. But we judged him. We whipped and beat him. We spit on him. And we killed him. He loved us anyway. He loves us anyway. He died for us. He died so that we wouldn't have to. He paid for our sins with his life. Did I mention he loves us? He came back to life. He was dead. Then he was alive. A lot of people saw him. He is coming back.
Who is Jesus? That's a big question. That's the big question. What does it even matter? What does it matter to you? Who is Jesus? My answer doesn't matter to you. Only your answer matters to you. Who do you say that he is? Who do you say that he is? Well, we are working on that question, right? Working on that answer. Hope you've made that decision yet. But just in case, here we are again. Uh, one thing before we jump into God's Word, I just want to clarify that on Christmas week, we do not have any other service other than that Christmas Eve. There's no Saturday night. There's no Sunday morning. So everyone needs to come out Christmas Eve. So it's Sunday night at 6 o'clock. Are we clear? Okay, awesome. Um, do me a favor and grab your Bibles. That's what we do, right? It's a Bible church, right? So I, I love that we can grab our Bible. And uh, we're going to open up our Bible to Luke chapter 20 this evening. And we're going to examine the first eight verses there. We're going to try to figure out who this Jesus is. We've been doing that for well over a year now. And we're going to keep going until we figure this thing out. And we're getting close to the end of Luke. And I don't know exactly how many more weeks or months uh, or years we'll be doing this in the Gospel of Luke. But it's been awesome so far. And, uh, you know, last week... Uh, if you were here, and I hope that you were, we want, don't want to miss an opportunity to come to God's house, right? Yeah. All right, remember, hey, well, hold on a second, Bethany. Oh, come on now. Sorry. We got some, we got the amen section up here, man. People that get fired up by Jesus, you get to sit up here in the tables, right? Front row, right? Let out a little shout every once in a while. Let them know that we're here, right? Yeah. So last week, we, we talked a little bit about what Jesus taught about this, about us getting together here in, in a place like this and what we're supposed to be doing, right? And the main point of that was that we are here to hear from God, right? That's why Jesus taught in the temple every single day. He didn't tell them stories about, you know, meaningless stuff. He, he spoke. That doesn't bother anybody. I just want you to know that. <laughs> Honestly, it's okay, yeah. right? She's cute. She gets away with it. She gets a pass. Total cuteness. It's all right. It's fine. <laughs> right? Yeah, let's vote. She stays. Yeah. All right. Awesome. 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 So, so. That's the only committee we'll ever have here. Just want to let you know you're all involved with that. So, um, so anyway, uh, we gather to hear from God, and, and that's why he uh, preached in the temple every single time that he was there. They needed to hear from the Lord, and so that's why we're here today, right? I hope so. And so, um, but we don't want to just uh, fill our head with a bunch of knowledge, and that's not going to really do anything. Um, we want to... Um, we want to have a little bit more of a productive evening than just to hear a bunch of truth. Truth's good, but something has to happen with it, right? So why don't we just do this? Why don't we, why don't we go before the Lord right now and ask him, uh, ask him some things, tell him some things, declare some things to him in preparation for from hearing from him. Father, we thank you for letting us gather here tonight. We thank you for the opportunity to come and worship you. We thank you for the opportunity to come and give our gifts, as many of us did just a moment ago, to give our gifts back to you and ask you to take those things and multiply them uh, for your kingdom's advancing. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, now that we're getting ready to hear from you. And so, Lord, I, uh, I would just ask that you would help us to bend our heart down that we would surrender, that we would not just hear your word, but that we would, even now, just start to wreck the posture of the proud man or woman in this room and, and help us to submit, not just to hear the word, but to submit to the authority of your word. It is your will, Lord, that we are sanctified, that we are changed to become more like Jesus, less like the person we walked in tonight. We were, we're not satisfied with that, Lord. You love us a lot right there, but you're not satisfied with us staying there. You want us to be more like your perfect son, Jesus, and that's what we, our desire is here tonight, Lord. So would you lower our hearts? Just bend the unbendable right now and help us to submit to your word. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. If you agree with submitting to his word, why don't you say amen? amen. Awesome. So God heard you. So tonight we're going to, uh, we're not going to hear about what we should do here, 
But we're going to find out about, this is going to be a direct one. We're going to find out who Jesus is. That's what the video has been saying for a year or so. And tonight, with total clarity, Jesus is going to tell you exactly who he is. Okay? And so let's read uh, Luke chapter 20. And we're going to read eight verses. Would you stand up as we acknowledge the king entering into the room? And we're going to acknowledge that he is here because his word, his word, whose word is it? His word is now going to be proclaimed. And so here we are in Luke chapter 20, first eight verses. One day as Jesus was teaching the people and preaching the good news in the temple, the leading priests, the teachers of religious law, and the elders came up to him. They demanded, by what authority are you doing all these things? Who gave you the right? Let me ask you a question first, he replied. Did John's authority to baptize come from heaven, or was it merely human? They talked it over amongst themselves, and they said, well, if we say it was from heaven, he will ask, speaking of Jesus, Jesus will ask why we didn't believe John. But if we say it was merely human, the people will stone us because they are convinced John was a prophet. In other words, that John was speaking from heaven. So they finally replied that they didn't know. And Jesus responded, then I won't tell you by what authority I do these things. You can sit. You can sit. You can sit. You know, uh, I got this little boy, his name is Jackson. You all know Jackson, right? He is so cute. See, my wife has a different definition of cute. I have a definition of cute. I look at this little baby and I see cute. And it stands, her cuteness is, is, is it stands alone from her behavior. It's just, she's just cute, right? See, my wife has a different opinion about cute. She would say that your baby is adorable, right? I think that's safe. I think she would say that your baby is beautiful, but she would only say she's cute if she's naughty. <laughs> cute to Meredith means adorable. It's a combination, adorable and naughty. And because they're adorable, they think they can get away with being naughty. That's what cute is. Now, listen, I don't want to have a vote because if you were here Wednesday night you know that I don't win votes, okay? So, I th although I see a couple more dudes in here tonight, we have to re th like re-vote here, right? Take a recount. I, th I see some hanging shads. We might have to check them and see. But uh, anyway, well, Jackson is cute by my wife's definition. He is rotten. And I, she's laughing. And, and she must, you must know him. <laughs> she, he, he, listen, I love my little son. He is just an awesome gift from God. But you know what he says? Like, when he wants something, he'll say, I want those cookies. Daddy, put on the Wii. Really? Who gives you the right to talk to me that way? See, in my house, it's an it's a, it's a evil dictatorship. I'm just telling you right now. He has, let me show you how many rights he has. None. But he thinks he does. He thinks he can look at me and tell me what to do. Like he's the boss, right? And, 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 and he, has, he is not the boss. But he thinks he is. And if you walk back into that classroom right now and ask him, he'd probably tell you that he's the boss. Because our culture tells them that. Did you ever hear that movie, Boss Baby? Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm punching somebody, right? That's rotten. But this is what they believe. And so here in this text, it's the same thing. Like, they're asking Jesus, like, what authority do you have? What, what gives you the... See, he was going around, he was performing miracles, right? Miracle after miracle. And then he went into the temple to their religious center where there's some leaders. And these guys, they knew their Bible, like for sure, right? And he's like kicking people out and take. It was a hostile takeover. 
If you remember last week, it was a hostile takeover. He walked into the temple where they were doing their thing, and he starts running people out. Get out of here. You're not doing it this way. You're doing it. We're going to do it my way. And he takes over, and they're like, listen, we're the bosses over here. Who do you think you are? What gives you the right to do this? Right? That's what they're asking. Let me give you a definition of authority just so you can jot it down in your notebook because you take notes, and I love you for it. Authority means this, it's the power or the right to give orders, make decisions, and enforce obedience. Um, You can't really get the full understanding of it until you get some synonyms. I love these. You ready for some synonyms? How about jurisdiction, command, control, charge, dominance, rule. How about this one? Sovereignty supremacy that's authority it's the boss who's in charge here and that's what's being brought to the table here to the forefront in this text who's in charge what gives you the right to be in charge here and so that's what we're going to examine here tonight so let's let's how about this um so so how many people have kids here raise your hand if you have kids right Okay, so imagine this, right? Imagine if, if before you were having a, your child, right? Before you were having a child, it's, oh, it's a nine-month thing, right, to have a child. So let's just say like um, 10 months before, you're, you're sitting at home. We're talking, about, we're talking about the authority of Jesus, right? So we're sitting at home. And, 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 you know, you're, 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 you're not pregnant yet, but you're, you know, you're talking to your husband about maybe, you know, maybe let's have a child. I, I think it's time, Right? which has never been a time. There's never been a time. But, but I think it's time to have a child, right? And you're sitting at home, and all of a sudden, uh, this ma- and I'm not talking about the, a little thing like in a cartoon with a halo and a harp, a massive, like, glowing, nine-foot-with-wings angel from heaven shows up in your house and says, you're sitting here. Yeah. Uh, God sent an angel, Gabriel, uh, to a woman named Bethany. And he said, like, listen, the reason why he was not a little angel with, with a harp and a cl- on a cloud, right, is because it says that Mary, Bethany, was really, really scared, right? This thing shows up in her living room and, and says, hey, don't be afraid. Yeah, right. <laughs> For you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus, and he will be very great and he'll be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel, euphemistic for God's people, forever. His kingdom will never end. So the baby that you will have will be holy, and he'll be called the Son of God. That's authority, right? That happens at your house. I need to know about it. That's authority. So we're questioning, who, who gives you the right, G- right there? Now, if that wasn't enough, say that's not enough. That's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. We need some more. So, so in, in, in Luke chapter 9, right, there's, there's this other story. You, you may have heard it. You can go there because we're a Bible church, right? You love the Bible. Don't you love the Bible? Yeah. God's word is so beautiful and perfect and pure. It's food for your soul, right? So in Luke chapter 9, there's this thing called the transfiguration. So, 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 so here's, here's, here's Jesus' disciples, and they're hanging out with Jesus up on this mountain. And, and all of a sudden, like, Moses and Elijah are there. Like the two king dudes, the most popular, famous people in all of faith for these people, right? And they sh- they've been dead for a long time, by the way, just saying, right? And they show up on the mountain, right? And then... Jesus starts glowing. He's glowing. Right? He's glowing. And and all of a sudden, a voice. They don't see anybody, but this voice from heaven thundering through the clouds. This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. Someone say authority. Authority. Right? The sovereign one didn't say to the greatest leader ever, Moses, 
follow him. Listen to him. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Greatest leader ever, right? It would make sense that he would say it of Elijah, this amazing prophet who performed miracles, right? Awesome. But he didn't. He chose Jesus and said, listen to him. That's authority. That's authority. And uh, you say, that's not enough. That's not enough. Uh, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verses uh, 28 and 29. What's happening here is that Jesus is teaching. And he's in the temple, much like we're in the temple, if you will, right now. And, and he's teaching. And, and, and listen, I, I, I've, I'm, I'm teaching you. I'm, I'm sharing God's word with you, right? And, and, and I'm offering up everything that I would know for you. And, and you know, I've watched my stuff. I, I watch lots of preachers. And I, have, I actually watch my stuff, too, to see if I'm doing all right and make sure I'm not saying anything I need to take back and all that, right? And making sure there's not a lot of ums and, 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 and sniffles and all this kind of stuff that I'm prone to do. And I want to be a better communicator so nothing distracts you from hearing the message that God would have for you. So I watch my stuff, and I, I think that I'm, I'm, you know, there's a lot better preachers out there. There's greater, greater deliverers of God's word in this world. There is. But I think I'm, I'm okay. And, and, uh, but, there's, but what's happening here is, is that there's guys that are, that, like, I, I'm not an expert in the, in, the, in the word. Like, I'm getting there. You know, I went to school and I study and all. And so maybe I might know more than the average guy or gal, but, but I'm by no means like an expert, right? But, but, the, but in the temple, there were experts preaching the word, right? And Jesus starts preaching and the people are like, wait a minute, this guy doesn't preach like these religious leaders, that these experts, like I'm talking, these guys that had, do you guys memorize scripture verses? I'll, I'll, I'll write your word on my heart, though I won't sin against you. That's awesome. You should do that. Memorize some scripture. It'll help you not to stumble and sin and fall, right? But, but they, they didn't just memorize a couple verses here and there. They weren't just big on John 3.16. They would memorize the whole thing, right? These guys were experts. In the, but Jesus gets up, and he starts preaching. They're like, man, he, he don't preach like the, the, one, the experts. No, he actually preaches as one with authority, right? Like, and, well, they were, listen, they're like me, right? They're just, they're just preaching someone else's words. And the reason why the expert wasn't really that great is because they're just preaching someone else's words. And Jesus was preaching his words. He wasn't just the reader of it. He was the author of the word, right? So you see in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, right? He is, so there in the temple, the Word of God was preaching the Word of God to the people of God. That's insanity, right? And that's why I'm like, whoa, this guy preaches with authority. Yeah, because he's the author of what he's reading to you. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Some would say authority, right? He's got the authority to do this. That's who he is. In Colossians 1.16, it says that everything, everything, think of something right now. Just think of whatever it is. Anything in all of creation, just set your, set your thought on it for a moment. Pick your thing. I don't know if it's a butterfly, a rock, a rainbow, whatever it is. God's word says that everything was, cre was created by Christ and for Christ. Right? That's authority. He's the owner and the operator of everything created. That's authority, right? And, and, and also here, how about this one? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2, it says that God, the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? So did you know that there's more to Jesus than this little, you know, little guy that came and we're getting ready to celebrate Christmas. I love the whole baby thing and the manger. That's great. But there was a time way, 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 way back way back, right? Ask me how far back. Way back that there was only one. And he was Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And in that time, there was a decision in the heavens that they would create the universe. And God the Trinity decided that the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ, would be the one who spoke and the heavens and the earth were created. Did you understand this? That it was Jesus 
who breathed and the planets came out of his mouth at 186,000 miles per second. That's authority. He has the right to do as he pleases. And so um, some people would say, well, you know, and I come from a Jewish face, and so they would say, well, there's only one God. And I would therefore say, I agree. And they'd say, well, but, but anyone other than this, you know, than the sovereign, you know, up in heaven kind of, right? They don't understand Trinity. They don't understand the, tr the triune God of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They don't understand that, but they know that there's a God. And they'll say, well, there's only this God and only one. And I would say, yes, I agree. But four verses after God's word declares that it was Jesus who created this God that those people believe in said, I command all of my angels to worship my son. That's authority. Amen. That's Jesus Christ. And so that's why it's so, so easy for Jesus to, in his great commission at the end of Matthew chapter 28 to just say this, I have been given authority in all of heaven and earth. Now go make disciples. Listen, no one can tell you not to do this. I have authority. And I said, go make disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Teach them all that I have taught you. So, um, Jesus, what gives you the right? I think it's pretty clear. He has the right. Amen. So here's the second thing that we see, and, and we'll just draw all the four things right out of the text. The first thing was, you know, Jesus' authority. The next thing is our authority as Christians. Like, what authority do, do we carry? Who gave us the right? Like, we do some things here in church, and as Christians, you know, we, we, we take the Lord's Supper, and we lead in prayer, and we preach God's word, and we baptize people. Anyone want to get baptized tonight? I'm in. But we do these things, right? And, 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 and that was happening here too. It's, and, and in the scriptures, you see it, it. They're talking about someone who was doing something. And look at it says. It says, uh, when Jesus gets asked this question, like, hey, what give you the right? He's like, yeah, let me ask you a question first. I think he probably said, yo, at that moment. I'm not sure. But I, I think he said, yo, let me ask you this question first. And I think he might have gone like this. Right? He probably went like this. <laughs> Let me ask you a question first. Anyone ever read the, 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 the book of, uh, of Job yeah. when he started asking questions? Yeah. <laughs> you guys, okay, so you know what I'm talking about. Let me just ask you a few questions there, Mr. Job. <laughs> Were you there when I like, made the earth and I told the ocean only this far and no further? No, then shut your mouth. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like our kids, right? That's us. We're, 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 we're Job. And, and that's the way we are. So he says the same thing here. And they're asking just a stupid question because he's God. And you don't ask God what gives you the right, you dodo. But it says, let me ask you a question first. He replies, uh, did John's authority to baptize come from heaven? Or was it merely human? Because I mean, like I said, we do, thing, we do things here. We baptize people right here in our church. We baptize hundreds of people here in this church. And so where, where's that authority coming from? Is it because, uh, is it us? Is it our thing? Is it just like a big party? We get people wet and we celebrate because the church grew one more person. Is that why we're doing it? Is there anything really happening in that moment that someone goes under the water and we say, and now I bury you with Christ and like him, you'd be raised to new life because you trusted in the mighty power of God that raised Christ from the dead? Is there anything, anything spiritually happening there? Is it just men and women doing these things? I, I don't know. I mean, he said... Go baptize people. Amen. All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth, and now I want you to go make disciples and go baptize them. Yeah. I don't know. You know, they've been baptizing people since the church began. We get baptized all the time. They were getting baptized back here in the Bible times too. You Do me a favor here. Go to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Look at verse 2. Well, you know, just first one right there. You guys there? Yes. The leaders are questioning Jesus. And so Jesus says, well, listen, uh, John was doing some baptizing. And was it from heaven or was it 
just man? Was it just John putting on a show for his own fame? Was there anything getting done? Well, it says here, Jesus knew the Pharisees. Those are the religious leaders I was talking about a minute ago. He said that the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing, that Jesus was baptizing and making more disciples than John. Now here it is. Look at verse 2. Though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. Right? So, here, so let's go back to the original question. Was John's baptism of heaven or was it just a man? Well, we see that Jesus, right? Is, is, let, me ask, let me ask this question. They're baptizing people, but it's not him. Like if Jesus was baptizing him, that would be of heaven. But his disciples were baptizing. Is that of heaven? Well, let me ask you this one question. If it was wrong for the people, if it was just a human thing and Jesus was right there with them, he's the ultimate pastor ever. So he's their pastor, he's their shepherd, and, and, he's, and, and his people, y'all, are baptizing people. If it was wrong, if it was only human, don't you think he would have rebuked them and said, hey, stop? Right? So what does that mean to us, real practical? Does it mean that you go meet somebody and you bring them to the pastor, you bring them, I'm not Jesus, but you know what I'm saying. Do you bring them to Jesus so Jesus, can, so Jesus can baptize them? Do you bring them to the church so that your pastor can baptize them? No. Right? You need to. You know it would be awesome? I shared this uh, a little while ago on Facebook. I went live from my office. I started thinking about the few folks. There's a few folks around the country that actually watch this from Massachusetts and um, South Carolina, a couple different people that, that watch. And I was thinking, man, wouldn't it be awesome if, if those folks that are watching right now, if you started inviting people to your house on Saturday night and brewed some coffee and put out some donuts or, co or, or, or cookies or something. And if, Paul, if you're watching, you got to save the cookies for the people. Okay, <laughs> just throwing that out there. And, 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 and you start inviting them and, and they heard the message that's being broadcast and then the next day, you called me and said, hey, when your message ended, we took my buddy into the bathtub and we baptized him. Wouldn't that be awesome? That's what I'm talking about. And, and that's what Jesus wants for us. He wants us to be baptized. Listen, it's not a human thing. This is, this is God's, so, listen, this is what Jesus wants, uh, the authority to go do the things we do here in the church. That's heaven's authority. Jesus said, go do these things. So we're not acting on our own. This is heaven's authority telling you know um the apostle paul same thing uh the apostle paul he was the greatest church planter that ever lived wrote half the new testament right had a personal one-on-one -on -one with the lord and and wrote scripture on the lord's behalf and in in uh, first corinthians chapter one there's a couple verses in there it says that hey listen um I only baptized, he lists off like, I think it's like four people. In all the, in all, I think he planted 14 churches. Imagine that. So 14 churches, goes all around spreading the gospel like nobody ever has before. And in all those places, he only baptized like four people. He says, I, I, the Lord didn't send me to baptize. He sent me to share the good news. Amen. So he sent him as a preacher. So the, the preacher would tell you, go baptize people, Amen. right? He, and then he, he goes even further. He says, did anyone get, thank God, did anyone get baptized in my name, <laughs> right? He just said, no one got, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and Paul. Like, that didn't happen, right? It wasn't human authority. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, right? right? And so it was Christ's authority imputed to us as we conduct ourselves as the church of Jesus Christ. Okay? We clear? Okay. Here's the third thing. Make a note. Uh, you look in uh, verse 5. Let, let's read verse 5 first. And I'll tell you what the, what the um, third thing is. It says, They talked it over among themselves. It said, If we say it was from heaven, he will ask why we didn't believe John. But if we say it was merely human, the people will stone us because they are convinced John was a prophet. So what do they do? Coward. So they finally replied that they didn't know. First and foremost, it's a lie. You knew they know, right? You knew they know. 
Because they voiced the answer in their refusal to, to, to voice an answer. <laughs> they knew, but they didn't want to make a decision. They, they didn't, wanna, they didn't want the, their, their authority usurped and taken from them. And so what do they do? Coward. They back out. They don't make a decision. Jesus is trying to do something here, and they're refusing him. What do we do? What do we do? How do we not just learn and grow, but how do we hold on to that which we have and white knuckle that thing, and I'm not going to let it go? And so the third thing is you got to make a decision on Jesus. You have to make a decision on Jesus, and I think this text makes it absolutely clear. You must make a decision. See, a lot of people are waiting with a T. They're waiting. And maybe that's here. Maybe you're here tonight. Maybe you're that person that you're waiting. Like you're living life. You're living the American dream, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, pursuit of pleasures, acquiring things. I want to be happy, right? And, 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 you, and your grandparents and, you, and your buddies have told you about this Jesus. And maybe, you know, somewhere down the line, I've heard this said that, you know, I'm just not ready for that church thing yet. I'm just not ready to say yes to Jesus because I'm sowing my wild oats. I'm having a good time. And once I get married and once I have kids, then I'll slow down. And then <clears throat> some people are waiting. And some people are waiting with a D. You know, they, 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 they tasted the things of God. Someone shared the gospel with them and they, and they stuck their toe into the, into the ocean of God's forgiveness and grace, but that's all they got. Maybe, maybe they step up and in, in they're in their ankles or if maybe if you've done some fly fishing, you know, you get some waders on, right? So you go up, and, but you don't want to go all in. You know, you don't want to go all in because you don't want to re release that control from your life. I'm still in control. And if I dive into the ocean of God's grace, it's going to take me places I'm not quite sure of. And I don't want to go there, so I'm afraid. I'm wading in. I haven't gone all in with Jesus. And I see both of these things all the time, and you probably do too. And maybe I'm speaking to you. Maybe you're one of those people right here tonight. And I don't want to ever give you false security and think that just because you walked into the door of a church that you're all in. Because you might not be, and only you and God know that. But maybe it's time to just stop the waiting and jump in and let the flood of God's grace totally cover you. You know, when I got led to the Lord, I, I sh I've shared this before, but it's worth repeating. You know, when I got led to the Lord, I had this guy, Pastor Brent, Brent Bickhart, I love the guy. He led me to the Lord, and, and he met me at a car dealership. You know, the darkest den of iniquity you can find, lying, cheating, filled with drugs and drinking. You know, I mean, just all the reputation of the, of the car salesman, they're true, and I'm ashamed to say I was a big part of that, but I, I am. That's, that's who I was. But this guy walked into the, into the dealership, and he, long story short, he shared the gospel with me. And I wasn't saved yet, but he shared the gospel with me, and he said, he asked me this, he said, do you have any children? And I said, yes. He said, well, let me ask you a question. Um, if you went to orientation at the school and you went up to your daughter's teacher and you said, hi, I'm Mr. Robbins, and he or she said, hi, I'm Ricky, and I'm God, what would you do? Well, I never had that question thrown in my face before. It's like, well, I don't understand. He goes, well, Jesus claimed to be. So what, what do you think he is? Moses. He asked me right, right in my face. And I was like, well, you know, I'm Jewish. So I'm like, well, I don't know. I mean, he was a good teacher. I mean, he was moral, you know, golden rule guy. Teacher to be nice, you know, pray for people and stuff. Like, I don't know. I thought he was just a good teacher. He's like, yeah, but he claimed to be God. And so if your teacher of your student of your daughter said, I'm God, what would you do? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. He said, well, maybe he's crazy. And if you thought he was crazy, would you let him, would you let your daughter go to his class? I'm like, well, I said, well, hell no. He said, or maybe he's a liar. 
Well, if he's a liar, then you can't say he's a good teacher, right? Or a moral guy. Moral guys don't lie, right? Then he looked me right in the eyes and said, or he's God and you bow. <laughs> it's like, he said, you, you can't leave Jesus on the fence, man. You can't leave him on the shelf. You need to make a decision on this Jesus. Amen. You have to make a decision. And that's exactly what this text is saying. You have to make a decision on Jesus. You can't leave him hanging out there. You know, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 11, verse 23, that there's no such thing as neutral. There's no such thing as neutral. He said, if you're, for me, if you're not for me, you're against me. If you're not working for me, you can check me. If you're not working for me, you're against me, right? We need to cross the bridge from believing to following, Amen. right? The demons believe. Jesus said, don't come believe me. He said, come follow me. That means think as I think, say as I say, do as I do. That's what he's looking for. We need to make a decision on Jesus Christ. And there's no such thing as neutral. Jesus doesn't look at someone and say, well, maybe later he'll get busy. Maybe later he'll jump into the deep end of the pool. He said, if you're not with me, working for me, you're against me. These are not the words of Moses. These are the words of Jesus Christ, the Lord, the second person of the Trinity who spoke and there were planets. And we must heed his authority. And if he said it, then what? It is true. It is true. God's word is filled with these things about making a choice on him. You know, um, way, way back in the book of Joshua, the second greatest leader, I'll say, in the history of the Jewish nation, Joshua's with the people. And, and they're, you know, they're kind of like you and me. Sometimes they, they follow Christ and sometimes they don't and they're kind of slackers. Say, I'm a slacker. I'm a slacker. We're all slackers in our own in our own ways, we're not, no one in this room's all in. I'm not all in by any means. And, and so Joshua, he's, he's, he's around all God's people. And he, and he says this at the very end of his, his book that's titled by his name. He says uh, in chapter 24, verse 14, he says, uh, so fear the Lord. Man, we, I got to preach about that again. So help me. And serve him wholeheartedly. How many, what's the percent of your heart that's wholehearted? What does that mean? A hundred percent, right? Not a condemning word, but an encouraging word. He wants more, and, and the more you follow, the more blessing flows. He's just trying to give you something here, loved ones. He says, put away forever, like not just temporary. Put away forever the idols your ancestors worshiped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. So in other words, to you today, all those things that you idolize, that you so easily give your resources to, and I don't just mean money. I mean, there's a lot of people probably even in this room that spend more on cigarettes each week than they put in the offering plate. Let's just be clear. It's true. But he's not just talking about that. He says, whatever you give your resources over to, how about your time? What are you praying for? Are you praying because you want to honor the Lord and see his kingdom come? Or are you just praying because you want stuff? So who's the, who's the God there? Right? So he says, put away those things that distract you from wholehearted worship and service of me. And he says, serve the Lord alone. Then he says, but, but, but listen here. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, now, 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 now keep in mind here, I got to point this out. I'm just getting this. But he never says, believe in the Lord alone. That's not what it says there. Now, we do need to believe in the Lord alone. I get that. But that's not what the call here is from Joshua, right? He says, serve the Lord alone. And if you refuse to serve the Lord alone, then choose today whom you will serve. Make a choice. Make a choice. Listen, Jesus doesn't need your half-hearted efforts. He doesn't need your half-hearted allegiance and loyalty. He doesn't need to, to, for you to treat him like it's a part-time job, something you'll do on Saturday night alone. 
I'm talking about your whole heart, your whole life. Give your bodies as a living sacrifice. That's the reasonable worship. He said, I want all of you, everything about you should be in service to me wholeheartedly. And then, G- and then Joshua gives one of the most famous comments, if you will, in all of Scripture, all of faith. He says, I don't know about y'all, but as for me and my home, my, me and my wife and my kids, I don't know about y'all, but me and Meredith, we're going to serve the Lord. That's, that's what he says. And that's the choice that we need to make. He said, I want you to make a choice. That doesn't stop there. First, this is an awesome story. First Kings chapter 18. Man, awesome story. First Kings chapter 18, go there. Because you love the Bible. First Kings chapter 18. Let me give you a little backstory here. So there's a bunch of people around Mount Carmel. And, and people are not really doing what it just said there in Joshua. They're not serving the Lord alone. They're not believing in the Lord alone. They're not doing anything right. They're worshiping God on like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But on Tuesday and Thursday, they're worshiping Baal. And, and they got these, these, these Asherah poles. I mean, it's just awful. And so once again, here comes God saying, hey, listen, you better make a choice, man. No more half-hearted stuff. Wholehearted. That's what I want. And so they gather around this mountain. And you can read the story. I'm not going to get into it. But they, they have like two altars. Let's just call it a pile. And they put wood. And, 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 and then Elijah puts wood over here. And they, they you know, and they, they make offerings, sacrifices to their God. So Elijah's going to make an offering to his God. And, and these false prophets are going to do their offering to their God. And, 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 and Elijah's like, yeah, whoever... Whoever's God you know, sends down fire from heaven, like whoever's God recognizes it and is awake and notices and responds, like whoever's real, that's who God is. Okay, so they do this. And all these crazy people, they're, they're, they're running around, they're, they're, they're sacrificed, and they're, they're cutting each other, and they're singing and dancing, oh, Baal, answer us, oh, Baal, answer us, oh, Baal. And, and, and Elijah gets, he has the spiritual gift of sarcasm, says, well, maybe your God is pooping. Maybe he's relieving himself and he doesn't hear what you what you said. And, uh, and, but then, you know, Elijah, he says, if you're real, show, and wham! Fire. But this is what he says to the people. It says in uh, chapter 18, verse 21, he says, then Elijah stood in front of the people and said, and this is the word for you guys tonight, for those that are waiting, and those that are waiting who have Jesus on the fence, who have made a decision to follow him wholeheartedly. How much longer will you waver, hobbling between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. It's time to make a decision on Jesus Christ. No more sticking your toe into the shallow end of the of the faith pool, and saying, I, I, I've got it, I'm saved. Listen, if you're not all in, if the, if the ocean, if the tidal wave of God's grace is not covering you, you ain't in. I think that's why we're supposed to be fully immersed as a symbol of what our life should be. Completely. Like when we get baptized, we go under. Completely covered. Giving ourselves completely to him. Listen, the cross of Jesus Christ demands a decision. You cannot see what he did on the cross for you and just stick your toe in the tub of salvation. It demands a great response. There's a difference, a massive difference between believing and following. And I'll just say this, true believers follow Jesus. They follow Jesus. They go where he goes and they do what he says. Listen, all the time. And I'm not saying that because I graduated, everybody. 
because I'm not, I'm not there. I don't do it all the time either. But this is, I'm going to be unashamed to tell you the truth. This is the standard that God's word sets for us. That doesn't mean it's Moses' standard that somehow I've made it because I have not. But that is the standard of God's word. All in worship. All in following. All in believing. All right. Here's the, the fourth and the, and the last thing on our, in our notes. And you see it there in the text. You can go back to Luke 20. <laughs> so they, so they, they refuse to give the answer, right? Like they know what they should say, but they're like, man, I don't know what I should say here because if I go this way, it's going to be this. And if I go that way, it's going to be really bad and a rock and a hard place. And should I stay or should I go now? You know, I don't know, you know. And, and so look at what Jesus says here. He's like, well, listen, um, if you won't make a decision, like, I'm trying to do something here, guys. And, and if you won't make a decision, then I'm not telling you who's authority. And I, I, look, I'm, I'm just saying this. I don't know that this is true. This, this, that's the gospel, and, and, and this is me. But it says here, um, so they finally replied that they didn't know. That was their answer. They didn't know. And I think Jesus is going, you know what? Uh, that guy, they didn't know, he's the one. He's the one who gave me authority. The, 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 that, the, that, the, the they didn't know guy. That's who did. But he's like, listen, if you don't want to know, then I won't tell you. you have, and, and so the, the fourth point is this. You have to be willing to learn. You have to, be, you have to be teachable. All of us have to be teachable. Nobody has ever, has ever made it. Paul himself, who wrote half of the New Testament, says, I haven't, even, I, I, haven't, I haven't reached perfection yet. I haven't made it yet. I fail all the time. He says, the things I should do, I don't. The things I shouldn't do, I do. Who can help me? I haven't reached perfection yet. And so Jesus is like, man, you gotta, you gotta be willing to learn. You have to be teachable. And these, these guys weren't, these cats weren't teachable, were they? They were not teachable. They were stubborn, rebellious, stiff-necked Hebrews. And, and that's the way we are too. That's why it says in Romans 12 too, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. The big word there is Let. In, in God's sovereignty, he's decided that his authority has been given to you in this area. That if you to change, you have to let it happen. You have to be willing to, 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 to bend your knee, to bow your heart, and to, will, to, to bend your will to the supremacy of Christ and say, your will, not mine. That's what we're supposed to do. We have to be teachable. In, Roman, I'm sorry, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, it says this. Now, you've been given the Holy Spirit. Let's just follow the, let's just follow the path here for a second, okay? Listen up. Ephesians 1.13 says that when you bowed the knee, when you said yes, and you believed in Jesus, in that moment, God gave you his Holy Spirit, right? And listen, there's no time when you get more of the Holy Spirit later on. The question is, is, is not that did you get more of the Holy Spirit, it's did the Holy Spirit get all of you? That's why it says to, to let God, let God, right? And so we get the Holy Spirit, but in Galatians 5.16 it says this, you got the Holy Spirit, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. So you can have the Holy Spirit in you all day and he could be coming out of your pores. But that doesn't mean you're doing what he wants you to. You're filled you got the Holy Spirit of God, the third person of the Trinity, the one who, who raised Christ from the dead. That power lives inside of you right now. But he's not forcing you to do something. You have to let the Holy Spirit guide your life. You have to let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. You have to let it happen. So last but not least, I just want to take you to the heart of the text. The big issue here. What's the, so that, here's the thing. When you read, you should always be like this. Okay, what's the main thing that, that God's trying to point out here to us? What is he trying to, to do here right now? And this is it. This is what Jesus is tenaciously pursuing right here in this text. He's going after this thing right here. It's this thing. 
they demanded. Some, some translations won't say they demanded, but, the, but the, the way it's said, it implies this. They say, tell me now, who gave you authority to do this? So they demand this answer of Jesus. These high and holy religious leaders come to this lowly rabbi and say, now you tell me, who gave you the, the authority to do this? You can see Jackson, right? You see Jackson pointing his finger. Dad, who told you that my bedtime was at 8 o'clock? <laughs> who told you that I can't have gummies for dinner? Who told you you had the right to perform these miracles? Who told you you had the right to clear this temple and make it your own? And you decide what happens here. Who said you could do that? That's at the heart of the problem. Acts 2.36 says, Let everyone know for certain that God has made this Jesus both Lord and Messiah. Listen, listen up. Jesus Christ must answer to no one. No one. He has all authority in heaven and earth. And he must answer to no one. Two times in the Psalms, Psalm 115 and Psalm 135 says that God does as he pleases. That's Jesus Christ the Lord. He does not answer to anyone. So here's, here's the thing. As the band comes up, this is, this, is, this is the thing that Jesus is after right here, right now, tonight. It's this. Bring up that last picture, please. This is it. The struggle for the throne of your heart. That's what he's after right now. See, we say... Who gives you the right, Jesus, to tell me what to do? Don't run my life. I don't want religion, and I don't need a set of rules, and I don't think you should be able to tell me what to do. You know why? Right there. That's why. The struggle that Jesus is going after right now is the throne of your heart. And when the world is pushing you up onto the throne of your life, Jesus is saying, no, get off the throne. That's my throne. I belong there, and you don't. But the place of blessing comes the moment we step off the throne and allow the king to be on the throne where he deserves to be. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this message tonight. I thank you, Lord, that your word is clear and powerful. And Lord, I pray that this word would go forth into the ears of the believer, and that you would give them the, 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 the desire to lay down their will right now, Lord, and let you be the, be the king of their heart. Lord, all of heaven and earth is under your authority. Lord Jesus, you are king. And we submit to you now in a fresh new way. As we, as we get closer to Christmas, as we usher in the holiday season and we celebrate for the 2017th time the coming of Jesus Christ to this earth to seek and save that which is lost. Give us a, a fresh feeling of, of position. Like, we're low, Lord, and you're high and lifted up. You're the king, and we're just your servants. So, Lord, help us to step down off of the throne of our life that you might take your place that you deserve, Lord Jesus. Help us to bend our will to you right now in a, in a real, in a big, and in a lasting way. In Jesus' name we pray. If you agree with that, if that's your prayer, let them know with an amen. 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 Let's worship him now. Come on, come up to our feet. Let's worship him.